70s I used to collect the color supplement of the Sunday Times magazine and I found one, I, I bought one that had um, an article about Soviet dissidents and one of them was the dissident poet Yakir and there was a full page black and white photo of him and um, he, he impressed me as someone who had the courage to say no to authority. It so happened that he was raised in a in Siberia in one of those in the gulag and his father was a general and um, his father was then executed and he was released from from the camp and then he became a dissident and ended up in a camp so I had his image on the wall for a while as someone who as I say had the courage to say no and um, then I, I decided to use his image in a couple of paintings and I wanted in one, on one occasion to have his framed picture on the floor um, kind of leaning against the wall and uh, when I was about to draw it I, I needed to check the perspective and, and, and look at a frame, look at the framed image on the floor and it wouldn't stand, it wouldn't stand up by itself so I grabbed my dictionary and put it there to hold it and then I saw what a gift that was, a red book over the face of a dissident poet. And so I kept it and I, I did several studies like this one to do a woodblock print, which I did at the Tom Thompson Gallery in Owen Sound, Ontario. And I used it in a, in a couple of paintings too. In one painting I showed Yakir and in, in, in a frame and I had a photograph taken of myself hanging upside down so that the face fl fills with fluid and your hair hangs down and and all the veins the, the, the veins stand out and so on so I put myself upside down next to Yakir um, and in the background of this study uh, there are there's a abstract configuration from the Russian avant-garde done by Popova <coughs> Lubov Popova and um, it's kind of interesting that that avant-garde uh, abstract art was done by artists who were very sympathetic to the revolution and very um, idealistic and then Lenin come, came along and said made it illegal not only to make that kind of art but even to own it so uh, it's kind of a, a political agenda that a sort of utopian agenda that was you know taken over and nullified and uh, so you know one, one is left with the question does art does art affect things? I know it affects individuals. I know that lots of people find solace from art and beauty and art are things that make life worth worthwhile for lots of people like myself. But it does it change political structures? Does it change history? Probably not.